up there, yeah, see that horizontal dashed line? That is the present temperature. Now, look, now, okay, so the present is all the way to the right of that graph. All the way down there. That's the present, right? Now, if you come over, you see that that, that graph there, Look the, again, the dashed line is the present temperature. Now, if you look at the bottom, you see it says YD, that's for Younger Dryas, and then you see a scale uh, uh, of time at the bottom, zero over on the right, and you see 10,000, and then you see, what is it there, 12,800 being the, the time of the Younger Dryas boundary. And you see that there's that gray band, light gray band that goes up there, um, and that was the Younger Dryas boundary. And you see, look what the graph is doing there. Look at how it peaks, this enormous peak there that actually dates to about 14,600. And then the climate just plunges down by about, that's about 10 degrees center. Let's see, we can look over on, the, on the, the vertical graph, and you see colder temperature, warmer temperature. And what you see there is that at this very peak, um, it's about like 18 degrees. Yes, yes. It doesn't seem like a lot. It doesn't seem like a lot. 18 degrees? Well, let me put it to you this way. Now, that's average temperature. Okay. Right? Now, since the beginning, this whole the whole climate crisis and global warming, right, the estimated amount of climate ch- of global warming is about 1.2, 1.3 degrees. Oh, wow. So this is this is like ten times the warming we've seen post industrial, right here. Wow! And 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 I constantly hear people say the planet's never warmed this fast and this much before. And I'm saying, where are you getting your info from, there, my friend? But you can see there was this rapid decline in climate change into the younger driest. Negative. It was roughly what negative forty degrees. Uh. It's got negative 5, negative 50, so that's 5 degrees about, let's say, yeah, almost negative 50. So it, 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 this is centigrade now, not Fahrenheit. Okay. So it, you'll see at the top of the graph, it's right at minus 30. At the bottom, it's almost minus 50. So that's, you know, 18 degrees centigrade. So we multiply that by uh, 1.8, and we're looking at like 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoa, that's that's a that's a climate that is a true climate crisis right there. Now again, and then look at there at the wave. I remember I said there was a there was an event at about eight thousand two hundred years where there was a short lived cooling event. You see that right there? It is right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, but other than that, this last ten thousand years is almost all of it has been warmer than now. At least in Greenland. So the way you get around this is you say, well, this was only in Greenland, right? But you don't have this. Kind okay, of so this is a study coming from a ice core, cores, an ice, ice core, core in yes, Greenland. Yes, this is an ice core in Greenland, right? Okay. However, since these cores were extracted and first analyzed in the early 90s, we've got evidence from all over the world now showing that. That correlates with this. That correlates with this. Okay. How deep were these ice cores? Oh, let's see. I think the Greenland ice core was about 1,500 meters when it hit bedrock. So 1,500 meters would be uh, about a mile. Wow. About a mile. Holy shit. I think it was actually even more than that. But, um, yeah, so these, these are long. A mile of ice. Yeah. Oh my God. And that's, that's over Greenland at present. See, cause presently. Presently. Presently it's a mile deep. Yes. Yes. So, look, you can see up there, see the medieval warm period? Now, look at the medieval warm period, and then look at the present global warming, which is right where that graph hits the the vertical axis. You see right there? And I said that the medieval warm period was warmer. All of the evidence suggests that the medieval warm period around the world was warmer than now. And yet, it was not a time of climate crisis. It was a time of human prosperity, but that doesn't fit the narrative, Danny. We're about right on par with the Little Ice Age. Yeah, we're a little, actually a little warmer than... See, this is going to be a little bit biased because right, it's in right. Greenland. Okay. 
You oh, have yeah, to if you, if okay. you have to go to the like European. If you go to the more southern, you know, farther south in the latitudes, what you'll see is that, relatively speaking, yes, the Little Ice Age was colder than now for sure, mm-hmm. a couple of degrees colder. Okay. Okay, and then you see warming at the end of the Younger Dryas, and that was a spasm of warming. Now, check out that huge spike over to the left. That's like within how long is that spike? That's a massive spike on, yeah. the, on the right, on the very end of the Younger Dryas. That one, yeah, probably a few years. It's vertical, basically. Yeah. And that is about 11,600. Now, you have what you had there was two gigantic pulses of meltwater into the global oceans, which caused what John Shaw and his colleagues referred to as CREs, catastrophic rise events. And I believe that these events, these warming events, are associated with the gigantic floods at the end of the Ice Age because it was these warming events that melted the ice. If we go to the next slide, you'll see that the next slide is a late Pleistocene mortality graph. Now, in these events that terminated the Ice Age, roughly half the great megafaunal species on Earth died out very rapidly. And what we have here is you look at this graph from left to right. On the far left, it's 50,000 years ago. And then it ends at 4,000 years ago over on the right. Yep. But now if you look at each one of those squares represents a fossil specimen. So for tens of thousands of years, from 50,000 years ago to about 14,000 years ago, you'll see that it's generally fairly sporadic. And you get to 14,000, and it really peaks around 12,000 years. So all of a sudden, around 12,000 to 13,000 years ago, a huge number of fossil remains were introduced into the environment. And so what and then at the end of this, these species extinct are extinct. They don't they don't exist anymore. So these are um, like it says here, each square represents a fossil specimen of a an extinct megafaunal species. Mastodons, mammoths, giant ground sloths, dire wolves, Pleistocene lions, saber-toothed cats, giant elk, uh, giant beaver, uh, yeah, giant armadillos. Everything was giant, by the way. <laughs> and Why were they so big? That's a good question. They were big. Wow. Huge. You know, the Colombian mammoth, Mammothus Imperator, the imperial mammoth, stood 16 feet high at his shoulder. That's twice the high of an, the height of an average African elephant, which is about 8 feet, 9 feet at the shoulder. That's bizarre. Yeah, I mean, they brought the remains, uh, the skeleton of an um, uh, imperial mammoth into the Fernbank Museum where I lived like about 10 years ago, and they literally had to remove the ceiling to set the skeleton up because it was so mammoth. big. Yeah, the Think Im- of like the uh, the big imperial walkers in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. So this shows a, a precise correlation between the mass extinction episode and the graph we just looked at. So where that graph spikes, that layer of ice had tons of dead animals. Yes. Yes. And if you go back one, go back one, Austin, that spike, I, I would actually do a slot. No, no, not forward, Austin, back. <laughs> there. If you go, that spike, if we were to flip this graph over, that spike would coincide with that younger driest drop right there. Okay. It's a very convincing correlation. <laughs>